Hello everyone, it's Nancy Rebecca and in this video I'm going to be talking about how the solar eclipse has impacted the dark and the light side of money. So, you know, in all the years that I have been making videos, Spirit has never pressed me to make a video about money. I've never talked about money, I've never thought about money in, in terms of that kind of corruption and the highs and lows, or it, it just was never addressed. But we have recently experienced a solar eclipse and suddenly spirit wants to talk about the dark side and the light side of money. Now, what I will say, I am a registered nurse. I like to really look at what's really going on on a global level, on a frequency level, on a universal level, on your own little community level, your family level, but even more so, how are frequencies impacting you at your human level, at your human level energy field? So I'm gonna be talking about this as well in relationship to money. So let me go ahead and get started because I feel like this is so out of my wheelhouse, uh, but I'm just gonna tell it in the way, in the form that it comes through from spirit. All right. So during the solar eclipse, the lights went out, taking a deep dive into money and the corruption of money. Almost, it just shows me like a hand reaching, you know, like you're laying on the ground and you've got your arm extended as deep as it can go in this kind of black pool of, um, of a sand trap or uh, what do they call it? Sinkholes. <laughs> like reaching way down and just pulling out the muck to pull out the truth around the frequency and the energy of money. The light blue frequency and all of its enormous surges that happened during uh, November, 2023, has really taken this laser blue light, shining a light on money and dissolving all illusions around money and revealing the truth around money and any kind of corruption around money, justice will prevail and justice will serve. So this is really what um, one of the many multiple things that the blue light frequency is assisting to do. But up until this point, it has seemed to take forever for any corruption around money, around banking, around credit cards, around taxes, that it seems like it is taking an enormous amount of time to finally get there. Well, it isn't gonna happen overnight. And when I ask Spirit, how long can we expect this kind of unfoldment around money, moving into a healthier, balanced place around money? How long can we expect it to take? And the answer I heard was six years. Now, does this mean that you're gonna to have to wait six years struggling with money before you see any results? And Spirit was like, no, it, it, it's gonna, it's already starting now, it already has been starting, and we will continue to watch it unfold little by little, and then hopefully, what I'm saying hopefully, in that six year mark, we as an entitled, <laughs> And I was gonna say entire, and the whole word that came out was in our entitled financial world uh, that we can expect to see a greater, healthier expression of money. So as I was saying that in all the times I've been making videos, there's never been a transmission for me around money, but now there are some big shifts that are happening. So I just wanna share with you I'm, I'm a registered nurse. And uh, as long as I'm working as a registered nurse, everything is just fine. It is an acceptable form of a career that the banking and corporate you know, levels really appreciate. However, uh, I've been working for the past 25 years teaching intuitive psychic development. I bet I was you know, working doing private readings to help people improve the health of their energy field. In the financial world, that is not considered a healthy, approved form of uh, making an income and money. So on that side of it, you would be so surprised and probably shocked, or maybe you wouldn't, 
about how much you know we are taxed and percentage wise just because of the type of work that we do so we are put through these kind of filters from one banking system to another to make sure we are legitimate so here i am 65 and i decide that i'm going to go to a financial institution to combine all of my kind of nursery retirement plans and things like that to get kind of a better handle on it right so about the time you get to be my age hopefully sooner than i did then you're going to get organized so i go into the office and i will tell you they wouldn't they wouldn't even talk to me they they um even implied that I was selling drugs and I was selling marijuana, I was selling drugs and that I was kind of filtering it, you know, through my uh, business to make it look legit. And they said, intuitive development isn't a legitimate business. I mean, it was, it was a mess. I can kind of laugh about it now, but really when I think about it, yeah, it makes me pretty angry. So um, what they told me, they said, Nancy, it, we don't care how much money you make. There is not a financial institution in the entire United States that will ever accept your money. Can you believe that? So even though I've been doing good work and I help people and through these YouTube videos, I help people, they don't see that at all. They do not consider my business legitimate, but let me just move on to the financial pieces. So, um, <clears throat> What was I going to say here? Yeah, I wrote taxed, 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 and taxed some more. So then Spirit showed me uh, two examples of what's happening in the world right now. And it is interesting that the example they were showing is like the Amazon owners of the world, the Bezos, the ex-wife, you know, and the, and the husband Bezos, Jeff Bezos, and what is her name, Mackenzie Scott, I think her name is, was is the ex-wife. And so what they're talking about is in their divorce settlement, so she got like, I don't know, $38 billion in that settlement, and she ended up immediately committing to giving away 50% of it to charitable organizations. So as soon as she got that money, she made that commitment to give away $19 billion to charitable communities. And what she was really interested in was uh, providing that to anything that's going to uplift education, that's going to bring equity, equality, and justice for all, um, to provide economic security to everyone, to uh, provide economic opportunities. So you having an opportunity to make more money and provide better for your family. So, and greater health, knowing that at those lower income levels, you have higher chances of having health imbalances as well. So immediately she knew her truth. She knew what she wanted to focus on and uh, she set her intention about the things that are important to her and that is uplifting the lower economic status of our global community now i don't know a lot about jeff bezos but the image you know they just show you know just wheeling and dealing and having a great time you know in the world and um, so i went to look up his income and i wrote down i don't even know where it was oh I was, was reading about last year in 2023 that he made $7.9 million. Are you ready for this? An hour. <laughs> it's like in 2023, he made $7.9 million an hour. And so I was looking up how much did he donate to charitable organizations. So um, I did see one was like 300 million and then there was like 197 million. <laughs> So it's kind of embarrassing, but then it was like somebody added it up and said he gave like $3 billion. So anyway, and, and what is he really um, interested in? And he's uh, the global warming he's really interested in. Um, he's also uh, interested in helping nonprofits that help families and helping the homeless. So he also has... Um, some wonderful ways in which he supports 
his charitable offerings. But this is what, so what Spirit was saying was, is that this is kind of an example of what's been happening in the world. You know, we know the haves and the have nots. Now we did shifting into the age of Aquarius is a lot more about the global community and about really helping to uplift everyone and support everyone. I don't need to really do a deep dive into the inequities. <clears throat> I think that most of us know what those inequities are. So let's see what my, what spirit was saying around this, that since the solar eclipse, there's been a major shift, um, spiritual shift around money and how it's funneled and how it will come back with the frequency of where it was funneled to. All right. So what they're saying is wherever you, the money flows to whatever it connects to, it connects to that frequency. And then the frequency is going to come back to the person who put the money into the funnel. So what they're saying now, since the solar eclipse, this grand shift in consciousness that's happened, this expansiveness that's happened, that before it was almost like the corruption was kind of circulating in its own little bubble. But this has changed now according to the spiritual information that's coming through. So what they're saying is, is that now there's going to be a direct loop, a direct connection. So if you are, let's say funneling money into corrupt outcomes, it's going to have a corrupt frequency, a corrupt vibration. It's going to come back to the person that sent it into the funnel. And that frequency can have the potential of interfering with their ability to expand and to grow and definitely interfere with their ability to expand and grow spiritually. So then spirit was showing me what an energy field looks like at the human level for someone who just totally deals in corruptive activities around earning money. So it showed almost like this kind of heavy, thick, kind of black, um, it's like a grease or an oil uh, energy field. And then I saw a little bubble right in between the hips is where the root chakra is located. Now the root chakra is your survival chakra. Everybody has a root chakra. And in that root chakra, it's like a spiritual library that provides information about how to survive. So what's the first thing that your spirit wants to make sure survives? It's this body, this body that you live your life in. It wants to make sure that you not only just survive, but you also thrive and that you're going to be happy and you're going to be able to help your families to survive, your communities to survive, um, your workplace to be able to have a job, have a roof over your head. So this is all about that survival and thriving within the survival. So it is a spiritual library providing you with all the information you need to know about surviving. So what they were showing was this kind of black sticky energy. It's a really mental energy. It's very kind of a violent, corrupt energy. And it shows that it's just kind of dripping like, you know, black strings of liquid just dripping off the walls. It's dripping down and it's feeding that little kind of hungry bubble is what it was. And then they were showing me, it was like this belching, you know, like if you've just eaten too much, you've had too much of the wrong foods and it's like you've got that stomach upset and you've got gas pains and it's like you're just belching 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 so that's what they were showing me the human energy field when you're mentally trying to think how am i gonna you know get a lot of money and not all the best ways it's gonna drip that black right into the root chakra and it's it's just toxic simply all right, then they showed where we're going financially with money and it's from that spiritual perspective that, that your spiritual light, you must now, especially now in the next six years, start to allow your spiritual alignment to align with your ability to have financial 
uh, thriving, that ability to financially thrive. So it showed a much more illuminating aura. And then that wanting to send the financial abundance, not just to you, not just to your little corner of the world, but you also want to see other people, not just survive, but also thrive. So if you're sending that out in that funnel, it's going to come back back to you. It's like spiritual brightness. You put more into the financial funnel, more spiritual brightness. So I'll explain just a little bit more um, about that. So I said, what does that mean? Spirit went on to say that what the intention is around the companies, corporations who wish to invest their money in more spiritually connected ways, it's just going to come back to them tenfold, you know, so that it's like the system is changing and I, I hope so. All right. <clears throat> so then spirit brought up an example. Um, so spirit brought up the first place companies need to begin this, um, spiritually funneling money is how they share the wealth <clears throat> of their earnings through wages. So, I went and I went and looked it up. And so did you know that there are still some states in the United States? Now I'm not going to mention any names cuz I, I never know what's accurate or what's not, but that there are still some states in the United States where the minimum wage is $7.25 an hour. Now, 40 years ago, when I was working at a hamburger joint, I think I was making $7 an hour. And so here I am 65. How is it that people are still only making $7.25 an hour? So then they went on to share that that's $290 per week. That's $1,160 per month. I'm telling you, you will not find a place to live where I live you will not be able to rent a place for that much. And that it's $13,920 a year. So they really wanted to put that into perspective. So these, this is what Spirit said to me. These wages do not allow room for hope, inspiration, and curiosity to grow and thrive. Which means you can lose your desire. Why bother? You know, why bother? All right. <clears throat> so, and I said, when will be we begin to see this shift? And they said, now, it's starting to shift now. We already have corporations that are doing this, where they have opted to have much higher wages at the baseline, even though they're not being told they have to do that. They're, they're doing it out of the goodness of their heart and their business. They know it makes good business sense. All right. So then, um, oh, where did I write this? Sorry. Okay. <clears throat> so oh, over the next six years, money changes. So, uh, what they were saying was the lower income, you only know how to survive. And, and then the middle income is you're, you're trying to spend to show that you have wealth and then the wealthy they just work to make more money so these are really big divisions so now they're saying the shift is uh, the wealth will increase the money going to those at the lower income levels so more wages going in that way more support going in that way the lower class then move um, then are able to make more money and uh, move more like middle class, putting more money in, and then it moves back up to the wealth, and then the wealth goes underneath, and then it goes dot dot dot, and then back around again. I'm sure that this is no news to those who have been studying and have doctorates and financial degrees, but to me. Spirit hat was just showing me how it's laid out and how it can work. So there's this survival, um, excuse me, this, this movement of upliftment, 
movement of upliftment and movement of upliftment. So, so they're at the community level, this larger desire to uplift. So there's a little story I just want to finish with as well. When I was in Nepal and we had taken a group to Nepal and we were traveling around and there's great disparity and financial um, wealth. It is a country, I will say, a bribes that, and I'm not saying that that was everywhere, but when you're working in the tourism business, it's like, all right, well, I can make sure you get to where you need to go with a couple of hundred dollars in my pocket. And it, it's like, you go to the airport, this really happened, where I have my ticket, you know, my ticket <laughs> includes one suitcase, right? Covers one suitcase. And the guy said, I need $300 cash if you want your um, suitcase put on the plane. And I was like, but my ticket says I'm, I get one bag for free. And they're like, yeah, lady, you're in Nepal. <laughs> you're out of your range here. All right. So that happened. But um, what did I want to say about that piece? So here we are in Nepal and we hired a, well, we brought in a meditation teacher. We asked a meditation teacher to come kind of show us how to meditate in Nepal. And it was a beautiful experience. And we had this uh, monk, Tibetan monk, goes by the name of Kimpala, who came in and he really hung out with us for quite a few days and really led us through uh, beautiful meditations. So I had brought in my suitcase two large sage sticks from the United States. And so I gave those to him as a gift. Now, he took those two sage sticks and immediately he talks to our whole group. I don't know, maybe there were 14 of us. And he said, come, 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 come with me. And he goes running down the hallway, running down the stairs, his orange capes flying behind him. And next thing you know, he's like, come on, come on, got to keep up, got to keep up. We went down the stairs, crossed across the way to this large ancient stupa that is uh, a world heritage site. And he had this little back doorway that he could take us through. So he's like, come on, come on. He opens that doorway and he takes us into the inside of where the stupa is. And there's this burning, it's like a brick burning uh, oven kind of thing. And he has us all gather around. He has us all put our hands on the sage. We put our hands on the sage and then he has us release it to the fire. So now I've just given him a gift. Now, normally the average person would hang on to that gift and use it for a special occasion. But he said, no, you must immediately put it back into the flow. So he threw it into the fire. We could smell the sage and the smoke and our intentions. But what he taught me that day was we must not hoard things. We must not hang on to it. We must not just sit and watch our bank account increase. It's like, it doesn't mean give all your money away, but it does mean that you want to keep that flow going. And so that's what spirit was showing is what are you putting in the funnel? Because that's what you're going to get back. And I think spirit is not just talking about money, although they were talking about money here, but it's like, if you put out kindness, you know, then, you know, that frequency of kindness is going to connect with the other frequencies in the world of kindness. And then you just are bathed in that kindness. So when it comes to money, it's like, watch for changes, watch for growth, watch for corruption to uh, be revealed and what has been hidden, uh, illusions around money to be dissolved, the truth about money to come with great clarity to the surface, and for injustices and imbalances around money to come into greater balance. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm really looking forward to seeing what's going to be revealed around money over the next six years. And I can't wait to see a much greater balance 
uh, between the haves and the have nots because this is the Aquarian time where the strength of our foundation is what is going to grow and grow and grow. All right, everyone. Thanks so much for listening in. I would love to know your intuitive senses about what you're getting, about the frequency of money, uh, what's coming up for you, what are you knowing about, uh, and what are you sensing and seeing around money over the next uh, short time. All right, take care, everyone. Thanks again for tuning in, and I look forward to seeing you on the next video.